Hey, this is Vu, and today I'm going to be taking a look at Outer on Train. And rather than focus on individual areas like Ladder or Ivy, I'm going to focus on the entire area as a whole because I think that this is one of those spots where if you don't play together with your teammates and coordinated setups and support each other, it's easy for your opponents to force a lot of 50 50 engagements, especially early on in rounds. And that's not something you want when you're in an area like Outer on Train where you can force a lot of advantageous engagements for yourself if you just play together and a Allow yourself to set up effectively so the two setups I'm going to focus on one is going to be more of a mid heavy setup with a triple rifle pushed up setup and the other one is going to be a little bit more about ivy with uh, double ivy now I think in most ranks that I've looked at teams in pugs and matchmaking do focus a little bit more on ivy than on outer so if you're looking at one setup to run and try and convince your random matchmaking team to play it i would focus more on the double ivy setup however of course it's up to you and if you're playing with a more coordinated team you can run both of these or even three setups and i think it's important to know all of them so the first one to look at here is the double ivy setup and it's not committed double ivy of course however you're going to have one guy rifling towards ivy and an opper is going to play towards green train especially earlier on in the round and what this means is that your rifle will have support from an opper if nothing's happening in t-con or it doesn't happen in t-con very often the opper can be peeking this angle early if he wants to he can throw flashes to support the rifler towards ivy as well like for example that one the, so the rifler can peek it and if your opponents are forcing in any way trying to get out ivy the opera can be towards hell or he can be towards over here if uh T-Con is locked down a little bit. The Opera can do a lot to rotate around and support Ivy, where in the other setup that I'll be mentioning, it's a little bit less like that. Now, this Opera early round does want to be focusing a lot on Ivy. However, you're going to notice most teams will be able to force Ivy control, at least up to this point, if they really want to. So you can try and get a couple of kills there, potentially delay them as much as possible. But you have to read the game yourself and recognize when you need to fall off and switch setups. Now this opera, as well as worrying about Ivy a little bit, also wants to be thinking about the rest of the map. Now on both the setups I'm going to be showing here, the inner player is left out to dry at least a little bit. So if there's no Ivy presence and there's no mid presence, this opera can also rotate around and play towards back bomb or even head over to Z if he wants to at some point. He's kind of the rotating force around in this general setup here. Of course, as I said, he wants to be helping Ivy quite a bit. Playing on top of green train early is very important to prevent anybody getting out to Olaf. And one of the things that the opera can do to prevent that as well is just toss a molotov that lands towards Olaf as well and he can play in this general area the two riflers mid are going to play together as much as possible the first thing i'll recommend here is if you have trouble holding the mid push you probably want to have the first spawn just toss a molotov off the wall there so it can block any sort of t-con rush it might feel like a bit of a waste at times because your opponents might not be rushing t-con too much However, when you're looking at pugs and matchmaking, a lot of the time it's very hard to hold these pushes without really good coordination, which again, you don't generally have in these kind of pug setups. So I would recommend just throwing that Molotov down, even if it occasionally feels like a waste and your opponents aren't doing too much there. That Molotov will shut down the majority of pushes that opponents are going for, and it's probably worth it in uh, random games. And it might even be worth it in uh, more coordinated games as well. You really have to figure it out with your team. Now, player one is going to be the guy that plays towards E-Box. This guy can rotate around. He can be towards E-Box on one round. He can be top red train on another round, which is a fantastic place to go get a lot of control from here or you can play um, a little bit back in the middle of bomb train if he also wants however it's not the greatest spot in the world and you're not really supporting your teammate that's a little bit more aggressive in quite the way you might want to so I'd focus on playing towards e-box top red train potentially playing in ladder if you have a really good spawn for it however um, I'd recommend against that a lot of the time as this is one of those 50 50 engagements I was mentioning and the other player around here, his general goal is to play on top of blue train between these two trains here and uh, pushed up outside T-Con. So one of the three. And the main thing you're trying to do here, um, this player can crouch down to try and avoid ladder or he can peek up occasionally to grab it. Or it can be smoked off, although you have to worry that someone could boost over and you have to be aware of that at least a little bit. 
Um, this player's goal is to try and get that first free kill as opponents come out of T-Con, because you can force that, and as your opponents come out of this choke point, they're kind of looking at a lot of different areas. They're vulnerable to a ton of different people, and they can't really be focused on top blue unless you give them an idea that they need to be focused there. So you can grab that first kill pretty much for free, and with this setup, this player can either peek around trying to get a kill on the right, or he can easily, very easily, drop down behind these trains and play around here. With this setup, this offer that plays towards green train is gonna be able to very easily support this player in this general area by preventing most people from pushing up on this uh, blue train player. And the guy on top of red train, if he's there, is going to be able to support as well, potentially getting that second kill, especially if he's behind red train, peeking out and grabbing that second kill on people peeking around. And so you're kind of playing a little bit more coordinated of a setup when you're in this situation, and you're forcing your opponents into awkward situations. Now, with the solo ivy setup, typically I'd run the opera soloing ivy. It's not optimal because a lot of the time the opera can't force a lot of frags here. However, with this setup you're playing heavier towards middle. This is a setup where I might consider having someone going into ladder, especially um, potentially uh, with support or something like that. You can play a lot more consistently towards top e-box here, right in front of e-box, forcing the ladder a little bit late for those quick rotates. and you can have a player on top of blue train and another rifler on top of red, something like that. So the goal of this setup a lot of the time is to force control of T-Con if you can. Uh, the previous setup, I don't think um, you can really do too much towards T-Con. However, with the triple rifle setup, aggressive in middle, I think giving your opponents the idea that you can push into T-Con, probably a good idea once in a while. You can make your opponents worried about that ladder flank, and uh, you can put a lot of pressure that your opponents wouldn't otherwise have if you never ran this setup. So if you're playing with a team in a coordinated setup, this is the reason I like to rotate between the two setups. Of course, one is stronger against IV pushes, and the other one is stronger against mid pushes in general. However, the other thing it does, even if your opponents aren't kind of heavy towards one side or you're comfortable with both, you can put pressure on your opponents, make them worried about different setups and different things happening because you're switching your setups around. So anyways, thanks for watching and I hope this helped.